everyone, and welcome back to Fit Tweet Nutrition, the radio show. And we are changing from well, every other week instead of every week, but we're going to start this round off with personal trainer and someone who's on her fitness journey, her own self, and how she used her fitness journey to start anew in Philadelphia. So let's get started. Today we have Fatima and we're going to talk about her personal fitness journey but first we're going to talk about who she is, where she is from and what she currently does besides the fitness journey or being a fitness professional. So go ahead Fatima. Well first I want to say thank you so much for having me on. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I am a mother of five. I have oh, three wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Goodness, Grace, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, a mother of five, so I have uh, four girls, one boy, and oh they're goodness. all they're all teens, basically. Oh, right now. okay. So you almost done. I'm almost, uh, almost, almost done. Okay, almost. You know, um, and like you said, I, I'm a personal trainer, a 305 certified fitness instructor, and then I I'm also the owner and creator of I is Strong Activewear. Um, that I just created this year. Um, and then I also work at Davis Bridal as um, in the merch operations department. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I wear many hats and I do many things. <laughs> <laughs> and where are you from? And I am, ori- oh, I didn't tell you where I was from. I'm originally from California, the Bay Area. Okay. I moved- yes, I moved to Philadelphia in 2013. And um, I decided to move here in 2013. Um, I needed to move away from, I- from a very toxic relationship that I was having with my kid's father. It mm-hmm. just wasn't healthy in any capacity. So yeah. I decided to make the change for the stability and basically for my peace of mind. Mm-hmm. And that's how I came to be in Philadelphia. Okay. Well, that's mm-hmm. good. Um, <laughs> so um, how did you start your fitness journey? Well, it actually started here in Philadelphia um, mm-hmm. because I didn't, I didn't know anyone and everything was new to me. And um, I was having these anxiety attacks basically because it was new and I didn't know, I didn't know anyone. I was not sure if I should go back. And so I was like, the best thing I can try to do with this energy while my kids are in school, let's try this gym thing. Like people say this gym thing is going to help me out. It probably, you know, and I was looking up things on YouTube and I'm like, okay. So I went to go sign up for the gym and I did some classes And as I began to go more and more, I started to want to do it because I never wanted to feel, feel weak again. Okay. So that's what really anchored me into my fitness journey Um, because of where I came from and the relationship that I came from. I never wanted to feel weak again. And I just viewed myself as this weak individual. So I was going to use fitness to build me up so that I never felt that way again. Mm. So um, I started the boot camp classes and I showed up every day. The first one there, I had no clue what I was doing. I was just (laughs) growing up. Okay. I didn't know how to use a machine. I didn't know how to do a push up. I didn't know how to squat. I just was showing up because I'm like, I have to build myself up. And as I began to see showing up more and more, that I became better at things that I didn't even know how to do before. Even if it was just like a modified push-up or lasting just 30 seconds longer, I was like, oh my God, I did that. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> and so it started to build up these habits where I was learning to show up for myself. And, you know, it was opening the door to explore what I really like and who I was outside of that relationship and who I wanted to be. And that's what really started me on my fitness journey. That's great. So mm-hmm. would you say that your fitness journey helped you like with your mental health wise? Because mental health Absolutely. is super, super big for me. Super, super Absolutely. big. Absolutely. 
I say it helps me 100% of the time, even now with my mental health. Like when I'm stressed out um, or I feel like I'm just overwhelmed with things, fitness helps me with that to keep me like on the even kill. Because sometimes I can get overly anxious, like, oh my God, what the, but if I go work out, it kind of, it just, and I don't have to be working out for a long time. It could be a 10 minute workout. It could be a five minute workout. And it will literally like, okay, it just takes me to a peaceful place in my, my mind. It's, it, mm-hmm. it helps me to shut off all that other stuff. The outside noise. Yeah. 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 So I it helped me 100% with my mental health. Yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, so since you have, you both have a personal fitness journey and you're a fitness professional now, how did you start with the fitness, uh, being a fitness professional? How did you get into that? Well, I started that because, um, I met my husband through fitness. He's a personal trainer. Okay. Um, and then as he began to train me more and more, he's just like, well, why don't you just do it? You know, enough information. And he's like, um, other people need to hear your story. Other people, this can be helpful to other people that's out there that don't, uh, that may not understand how fitness can help them heal mm-hmm. or can help them with their mental, you know, mental health. He's like, so why don't you just do it? You know what you're talking about. And I was hesitant at first. Cause I was like, oh, who the heck wants to listen to me? Like, <laughs> I'm just a regular way I thought when I started this podcast, I was like, who wants to listen to me? But go ahead. <laughs> I'm a regular person, you know, and I was like, well, you know, because, you know, sometimes you have these thoughts like, well, I don't exactly look like her or I don't exactly have the eight pack or the six pack going on. I'm still an average person. Mm -hmm. I'm just me. I like to work out. I'm fit, but I'm not like, you know, bang, bang, bang everywhere, you know, (laughs) And, and snatch me like it doesn't matter. He's like, people need to hear your story and you should share it and go for it because you have great information to help them. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go for it. So the first thing I did actually was the 305. uh, And I did that because I was always like watching these things and like, oh my God, I wish I could be her. I wish I could be her. And then I was like, wait a minute. Well, I'll just try it. I can be her. And so then I went for it. And through that process of like trying out and learning everything, I proved to myself that, wait a minute, I can do it. Mm -hmm. Like I can I can really do these things. And so by doing 305 and becoming certified, which is all about having fun, it's not about getting it right. It's not about getting it wrong. You don't have to be an amazing dancer. It's really inviting people in to authentically be themselves, dance, have a good time, sweat it out, and you're done. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I love that. Like people should know that fitness does not have to be this long drawn out, like, oh God, I got to go work out. And then that gave me the further boost to say, okay, let me go for my certification for personal training. Mm -hmm. And then I went for it. And then I was like, I knew way more than I thought that I knew. (laughs) Yeah. And I was thinking the whole time it had something to do with how I looked. And not what I actually knew. What you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that was holding me back a lot. And then finally, when it clicked, I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. I'm yeah. just going to go for it. And so that's how it came about. <laughs> really through the encouragement of my husband. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm pretty sure that he is uh, a good person. And probably, probably one of the best per- people that you've met since you've come came to Philly, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah. what made you start your, uh, your sportswear? Well, I started the sportswear because um, I'm into leggings and I'm always looking for quality leggings that won't slide down, you know, or that I can wear not just in the gym, but outside. I can dress it up, dress it down. But it was also because I wanted to create this community where women could come in and they can be supportive of each, of each other wherever they may be on their fitness journey. I don't care if you're a beginner. I don't care if you're just inquiring. I just wanted to create this community of women that we are there to support you, whether you've decided you wanted to take a week off or you've been gone for five years. Mm-hmm. You, I just wanted to create this space where no matter what, you're going to feel supported along your journey. Mm-hmm. And the clothing is just like the bonus. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like, you know how you, so I wanted to be more of like, you know, getting the message across that it's not always about the outer because you can look great on the outside, 
But like, if you're not doing the work on the inside to be just as beautiful, mm-hmm. if you will, all of that at the end of the day is not going to do anything for you. So that's like why, it. yeah. And that's why I started it because it's like, yeah, we, we, we all as women like to look good. We want to feel good. We want to be cute. We all do. But sometimes we don't have that support system that's really there to say, it's okay if you mess up. It's okay if you took the day off. It's not the end of the world that you ate the ice cream. Who cares if you ate the slice of pizza with the kids? So what? You're a human being. And so I just wanted to start that community of women to just feel comfortable to come in and know that they're going to be supported and not judged. Yeah. And when you look good, why you do it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what is the biggest lesson that you've learned on your journey? So it can be on your fitness journey, your personal fitness journey, or both. I think the biggest thing that I've learned on my fitness journey is it wasn't just about how strong I was becoming physically Mm -hmm. or how much weight I was losing. Fitness really became my self-care routine. It helped me to soften my view on myself if that makes sense yeah Um, it helped me to appreciate who I am and how I show up as Mm -hmm. myself Mm -hmm. um it helped me to learn about how to take I don't know if you want to call it a loss or what if you will um if I did fail at something that that was okay there's always I can always get back up and try again like if I couldn't lift something at that time, it wasn't the end of the world. Mm-hmm. It taught me that it's okay. You can pick yourself back up and then come back, build yourself up until you can get to that point. Yeah. So it taught me how not to try to jump, jump steps basically. And that's even in life. So like, sometimes I just want instant gratification. Like, no, I want it now. I don't care. I don't want to do step A, B, C, D. I want to go straight to the point. But fitness taught me that it's all about building yourself up to eventually get to that point and you have to take those necessary steps and it gave me freedom yeah yeah I, I, I yeah I, I understand yeah like, instant mm-hmm. gratification is one of the biggest things that I talk about because people want see what they see on Instagram or Facebook or on TV and they're like oh I don't like that and they're like yeah. but I don't want to do this so they'll do no offense to you if you do it or anything like keto or they do the the diet where Mm -hmm. they only eat meat or they do extremely low carb diets or yeah i was gonna say that one cutting the entire carbs out or uh let's not uh, we're not gonna eat at all we just (laughs) liquid (laughs) diet smoothie smoothie diets and stuff like that yeah and they Mm -hmm. want the results now instead of actually learning the steps so that way it becomes not just, you know, something that you do right now in the moment is something that you mm-hmm. do for the rest of your life. Exactly. So, yeah. Exactly. Um, what is the most underrated thing in the fitness industry right now? Underrated. I think the most underrated thing in the fitness industry right now is not really talking about that it's okay that you don't look like Mm so-and-so. Everyone wants to show these before and after pictures and these great, and I'm not, listen, I'm not knocking before and after pictures at all. We all, hey, you did the work, but I'm saying like certain ones with certain physique and then it's just like, you have to let people know that if they don't achieve that right now, that they didn't, they didn't fail and that we're all individuals and what, how her body may have turned out for her doing the same workout Yours is not necessarily going to turn mm-hmm. out the same. And that's okay. And a lot of, I think that's the most underrated because people are not knowing this enough that you don't have to look like so-and-so over here to say that you've achieved results mm-hmm. or you don't, because you don't know how long she was working at that, you know, to get those results. Yeah. You know? And it's okay if you, if you don't obtain those same results, you're an individual. And we don't talk about that enough. Like, Everybody wants to build a big butt, okay? <laughs> I ain't against you if you want to. That's your business. <laughs> you no, know, but sometimes it's like we don't talk enough because we become obsessed with these things. Yeah. That we have to we have to look a certain way. And it's not talk, talked about enough that there's a lot of factors that go into why people may not achieve a certain thing. There could be a health factor. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. you know, and you have to, you have to do certain things because of that. Yeah. And so people, it's underrated. Like you don't have to be so harsh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you're, 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 trust me, you're hitting it right on, on, on your own point. So yeah. trust me. <laughs> what is the most overrated thing? So most overrated. Overrated, I think, is you got to do this certain kind of workout for this amount of time. You got to show up at it. You got to show up like this. The, it, like, oh, please listen. <laughs> no, or you have to do this certain type of workout in order to. You have to be, or you have to be doing um in a certain category, if you will. Uh -huh. Like, you have to be a cardio person, or a weightlifting person, or a, a calisthenics person, or and that's fine that there's all those areas. I'm not knocking that. But I say people should find what feels good to them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's overrated by trying to push a certain thing to people. Like, you have to be doing this. You have to be doing that. Yeah, that's overrated. <laughs> so um, when you get clients, how, of how often do you get clients who think that they have to work out for hours upon hours? A lot. A lot. And that that's one of the reasons why they say they will they're hesitant to even sign up because the automatic don't kill me. Like, are you gonna kill me? <laughs> like how many, how many days a week? Like how many days a week are you expecting <laughs> to show up? Um, like how long out of my day is this gonna take? Um, or like how how much sweat am I really gonna have to be doing? So you know, like there's, you know, people like that that want to know, like, how much time is it going to take up outside <laughs> of what they have to do? Or there's some people that's like scared that, well, how am I going to do this? I'm a beginner or I've been away for a long time. Like, you expect me to be in here for a whole hour? I got to be in here for three hours. And I'm like, no, you don't need to be with me for working out with me for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't even want to work out for three hours. No, I don't want to work out for three hours, okay? <laughs> um, but when I have those type of clients, I just reassure them that, I, you know, that I'm going to do what's best for them. And it's not like I'm just going to create some plan that I'm doing myself. Mm -hmm. It's individualized. I'm going to analyze where you're currently at, what you what you are capable of doing, and how we can build you up, and how much time you realistically have to dedicate to this. Because I'm a mom. And I get a lot of moms and we are busy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I understand that sometimes we don't have an hour. I don't have an hour. Okay. So the most I could give you is maybe 30 minutes. So I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, I also have, I also have online clients who just want to do hits where I give them like 10 to 15 minutes and just like, let's, let's go. And that's good enough for them. Um, so I do get those clients, but I let them know that we're going to have a discussion about what your lifestyle really is. How mm -hmm. much time can you actually dedicate to this? Because I don't want to set an expectation that, oh yeah, you're going to show up here an hour every day. If you really can't give me an hour, yeah, you know, because then you're going to feel defeated mm -hmm. already. And then I'm going to feel defeated because I'm like, yeah, okay. They are probably not going to come. <laughs> and that's not a good, and that's not a good start to our relationship. Yeah. So I would rather everyone just be honest that this is only how much time I have. Mm -hmm. yeah. and we can work with it <laughs> yeah like you said you don't need a lot of time you don't so I, I, you don't. that's why i asked you that question because a lot of people think that they have to be in the gym aka my boyfriend for hours and hours and hours and you kind of mm -hmm. don't so you i mean you can get a good workout in a half hour to be honest yes, you can you can. So. <laughs> you can get a great workout in half hour yeah it just depends on what you want to do, you know, mm -hmm. and how much time you want to dedicate to it. Cause you know, my husband's like that. He can be in there for hours and hours. And he, and he tried to have me in there. like, okay, listen, I got to go home. I have, you know, your yeah, dinner. They say, for well, what though? For yeah, what? But this is dinner that you're going to want. <laughs> <laughs> me. <laughs> um. It's the muscle pump. I think it's the muscle pump. It, it has to be. Yeah. It, it, it's not, it, it, it sounds like sometimes it's mostly a men thing when they want it's, to be it's the muscle hours pump. and hours and hours and hours. The Unless only time like I a, will, I'm, I'm guilty now. I will be in there for at least an hour to 15, 
30 minutes that's, on leg that's, day. That's not too bad. But if you're in there that, for yeah, two, but, three but hours. But leg day only. <laughs> <laughs> and unless you're like a professional bodybuilder or you have a competition, you have to, you know, do it twice a day. That's a little different. But if you're just in your regular, smuggler person and you're in your two, three, four hours, and, you know, it's, that's, it's not necessary. Yeah, because then you're overworking your body. Yeah. And you're going to defeat the purpose of your whole workout that yeah, you, and you're really trying to get done. Yeah, and then you also yeah. make yourself more prone to injuries as well, which people exactly. don't understand. So, mm-hmm. um, what is one piece of advice that you have for our listeners and watchers? It can be for, you know, your, from your personal journey or your professional journey. It doesn't really matter. The one piece of advice that I can give the listeners is to really find out what it is that brings you joy. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not fitness, take the time to really find out what brings you joy and do not ever compare yourself to anyone else. No matter where you are in your journey, it is your journey. You're never behind anyone else. You're exactly where you should be in your journey and stop being so hard on yourself and, and talk to yourself when you have negative thoughts about yourself Talk to yourself the way you would talk to your best friend. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. going to help you a lot. Yeah, I agree. Like well, that I was said, more than one piece of advice. No, that's, but... that's just, look, you gave multiple, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people will find it handy. But on a, um, a serious note, I, I said this, I think the last, the last podcast I did, when I went to therapy, my therapist said to me, why would you talk to yourself the way that you do if you won't talk to yourself, if you won't talk to others like that? Mm-hmm. so if you don't allow others to talk like that to you why would you talk like that to yourself exactly so exactly same advice guys from so this is just a theme self-love is mm-hmm. very important so it is so important it's very important very mm-hmm. very important so how can people get in touch with you if they're interested in your services or okay. your active wear which i will talk to you about that <laughs> later <laughs> <laughs> well, um, they can get in touch with me on my Instagram. It's at Miss Von Watts, and that's the V O N W A T T S, Miss Von Watts. And then for my activewear, my, the IG for the activewear is at Aya A Y A underscore Strong, and that's for the activewear. Okay. And that's how you can get in contact with me. And you can click the <laughs> link in the bio to schedule classes, inquire about personal training. And also I do um, IG lives where I give 15 and 20 minute uh, workouts. So oh, if you want, okay. you want to work out live with me, okay. you can join me. <laughs> Once I get cleared from my injury, I'll take you up on that offer. <laughs> yes. And we have a lot of fun. So just join in whenever. I would definitely take you up on that offer. All right, guys, so that's our guest for this week. That was Fatima, and we are going to wrap it up. And I'll see you guys next week for the next guest. Hey, everyone, it's Chanel, and that is the end of this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed it, please, 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 it would be awesome if you take a few seconds out of your time to leave a comment, leave a like or a love. Or subscribe because we are available worldwide and I would love to hear you guys' feedback. See what you like, see what you didn't like, who I should interview next. I would love to hear back from you guys. Or if you want to watch the full video, please visit us on YouTube for the Fit Seat Nutrition Personal Development YouTube page. So I hope you guys carry whatever advice you take from this episode throughout the week. And have a great week. <laughs>